2023 will go down in the history books as one of the most eventful years so far in this century. Let's talk about the top 10 most important events that happened in 2023 that will ultimately shape the rest of 2024 and possibly beyond. And stay to the end to see how those events will shape 2024. First, India passed China to become the world's most populous country. While China's population has already peaked and has begun a large decline, India's population is very much still on the rise and is even expected to continue its growth for several decades. However, India's growth rate has begun to slow, and its young population will provide more opportunities for education and the workforce feeding the Indian economy. This has heavy implications for the next several decades. As the Chinese economy slows down and the Indian economy begins to pick up and move faster, and India seeks to compete with China more closely both militarily and economically. That said, India has a long way to go to actually compete head to head with China. But this event in 2023 has put India well on that path. Obviously population matters in all of this because the more folks that you have to work in the economy, then the larger you can build your economy. And in the case of China, you have an aging population that will soon require things like social security or an equivalent to social security, if you can think about that. They'll also be retiring, but in either case, they won't really be able to work or take on the kinds of jobs that a younger population can. And while tensions continue to rise and competition continues between India and China, there are tensions much closer to home that peaked in 2023 as well. Venezuela passed a referendum in 2023 declaring that the region of Essequibo belongs to Venezuela. Essequibo, of course, is a very resource-rich region in Guyana. It has a lot of oil, it has a lot of natural gas, it has what's been discovered as the world's largest deposit of oil, and it also has natural gas and other rare earth elements. And while the dispute is not brand new and it in fact goes back centuries, it has risen to a point that it has become a bit of a concern. However, these tensions might have actually been slightly exaggerated at the time, and I'm just as guilty of this as anybody having covered this situation on this channel. That's because the two presidents, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro and Guyanese President Irfan Ali, recently met and agreed to resolve this conflict without military military force. Venezuela is entering into an election season in 2024, and while they're pledging to have this election in a peaceful democratic way, their listing on the world's corruption index definitely leaves much to be desired as they're very much near the bottom. Which that is a heck of an achievement. I don't know how exactly you get to the bottom of that list, but boy, that's tough. There are also key players in the region like Brazil and the United States, which help act as key deterrents for any kind of military action by Venezuela. And to be honest, this whole saga looks like an attempt to offload domestic economic problems on the United States. And while the Essequibo dispute is centuries old, the recent economic crisis in Venezuela is very much a recent phenomenon, and very much a result of domestic economic policies and not any kind of international pressure. So this is one territory that avoided war in 2023, but there was another territory that was fully annexed in 2023 that you've probably never heard of. After fighting a war in the region back in 2020, Azerbaijan annexed the region of Nagorno-Karabakh from Armenia in 2023. The war in 2020, known as the Second Nagorno-Karabakh War, cost thousands of lives, and it ultimately ended in somewhat of a stalemate. Azerbaijan was not able to take full control of Nagorno-Karabakh, however they did inflict severe losses on the Armenian military. By the time the war ended, the Russians were able to help facilitate a ceasefire agreement between the two sides, with Russia acting as the peacekeeping force. You can probably see where this is about to go. The ceasefire collapsed. With Russia's invasion of Ukraine, 95% of Russia's military combat power moved into Ukraine, leaving the peacekeeping force in Nagorno-Karabakh at skeleton crew levels. Obviously, there was no deterrence for Azerbaijan to finish their work, and so they did exactly that. And they were able to take full control of Nagorno-Karabakh and introduce it as a new Azeri state in the fall. There's been some leftover concern that Azerbaijan will invade further into Armenia to create a land bridge with its western region of Nakhchivan some time in the future. However, that said, Azerbaijan has its own set of deterrents as well, and there are other larger regional actors at play. For instance, Turkey and Azerbaijan has a, have a very close relationship, while Armenia has sought closer relations with both Russia and Iran. Obviously, that hasn't done Armenia so much good lately, but that could become a problem in the future for Azerbaijan if they're not careful. However, this probably is not the only conflict from 2023 that you did not hear about. Sudan went through a coup which plunged the whole country into a full-scale civil war. 
and it received little to no international attention. The head of the Janjaweed militia, and yes, that is a real name and it's awesome, launched a coup attempt to overthrow the military-led government. Of course, this did not succeed quickly, and as tends to happen with other coups that don't succeed quickly, this plunged the country into a civil war. However, this story gets even more complex whenever you consider the ties between the Janjaweed militia and other actors in Ukraine like the Wagner Group. And this has led to some videos being published by the Ukrainian military showing Ukrainian special forces operating in Sudan targeting the Janjaweed militia. There is another issue, however, in 2023 that, but I don't think folks really realize how important that it might be. The inter-Korean military agreement, which had held tensions down in the Korean peninsula since 2018, has collapsed. And this all started when North Korea made attempts to launch a spy satellite into orbit. Now, so what? Everybody and their cousin has a spy satellite. Heck, maybe I have a spy satellite, but you'll never know about it. So if North Korea can create a miracle and get a spy satellite up into space, then why not just let a miracle be a miracle? Well, according to the United Nations, the United States, and South Korea, these satellite tests are actually a cover to test ICBM technology. As it's basically the same missile platform, you're just telling the rocket to not terminate in space, you're telling it to come back down on a different place, and you replace the satellite with a warhead. After two failed attempts, North Korea had a successful launch. This prompted the South Koreans to resume reconnaissance flights over the DMZ. That, of course, prompted North Korea to completely pull away from the agreement and begin to remilitarize the DMZ. Since then, North Korea has resumed their normal activity of testing ICBMs in the Sea of Japan and, of course, continuing its bellicose rhetoric against the United States and South Korea. And while this all sounds somewhat normal, especially if this is just kind of like the status quo you're used to, and I'm pretty sure we're all used to it at this point, consider where relations were between North and South Korea and North Korea and the United States in 2017. They were bad. They were very bad. And while this agreement dissolving won't immediately plunge the Korean peninsula into war, it definitely takes the lid off of how far tensions can really go at any one time. However, this isn't the only event in 2023 that we should be paying close attention to. There's another trend from 2023 that I find particularly disturbing. Artificial intelligence is making its entrance into the national security space and is gaining lethal combat duties. There are a couple stories that we needed to talk about to discover this trend. One report is about the Pentagon eyeing AI for use in combat duties, specifically with autonomous weapon systems. And this follows a trend by China also seeking AI for weapons platforms. However, there's another story of Israel using AI in its targeting process in Gaza, leading to a significant proliferation in potential targets, which has also led to a significant rise in civilian deaths. Now, we're not necessarily at the point right now where we're about to see autonomous drones flying around killing people, but the fact that we're talking about autonomous weapon systems describes that we're, we're a lot closer to that than really any of us should be comfortable with. And all of this is obviously going to be disturbing. Obviously, war shouldn't happen, but if it has to happen, Happen, then the sanctity and value of human life should be at the very least honored. The taking of human life should not be passed off to some autonomous system. It should be a human being that knows and understands what they're doing that has that kind of control. Even with oversight, I have a lot of questions on what this would even mean for the future of war. Not only are there ethical issues about AI killing human beings on a battlefield, what are the legal implications? If an autonomous weapon system goes out and kills the wrong people, either by committing fratricide or say it kills civilians, who's responsible for that. However, AI is not the only issue between the US and China from 2023. Overall, 2023 saw the continuing rise of tensions between the United States and China. And while there was a good meeting between Presidents Joe Biden and Xi Jinping in San Francisco at the end of 2023, it was the first such meeting since 2021. And this did reopen military communications between both the Chinese and US militaries. So this all sounds like good news and that things are being resolved, so what's the big deal? This meeting didn't fundamentally resolve any of the tensions between the United States and China or any of the problems that they have with one another. If anything, it only opened the door to prevent tensions from rising uncontrollably. Since the meeting, China has continued aggressive behavior in the South China Sea, and the US and China remain at odds over security in the Red Sea. And of course, Taiwan continues to be a non-starter between both the United States and China. 
In fact, in the recent meeting between Xi Jinping and Joe Biden, Xi Jinping reiterated that China wishes to reunify with Taiwan in the near future, even though there has been no timetable set just yet. In fact, there is a critical element on this particular topic of Taiwan between the US and China going into 2024, but we'll talk about that at the end of this video. This is one area where a war could happen, but there's another area where a war has been happening. The war in Ukraine continues and is close to reaching its second full year of fighting, and there is no end in sight. And 2023 showed just how dangerous and deadly this war can be. Of course, at the beginning of the year, the war was characterized by the Russian offensive near the city of Bakhmut, and this closely followed Ukrainian victories in Kharkiv and Kherson. After Russia successfully took Bakhmut, they were unable to exploit any kind of significant breach in Ukrainian lines, and lines continued to harden. However, this all preceded Ukraine's counteroffensive, which many hoped would end the war outright, but ultimately it did not succeed in ending the war or even putting the war on a trajectory where it will end quickly. And having said that, both Ukraine and Russia have effectively frozen the lines where they are right now, where instead of fighting over towns or regions, they're fighting over tree lines. However, during the end of the year, the Russians resumed offensive operations, this time around the city of Avdivka, with losses mirroring that of Bakhmut. Now, this all happened throughout the year. However, there was one event that impacted the war significantly near the midpoint of the year that will impact Russia for decades. Yevgeny Prigozhin, the owner of the Wagner Group, which has been one of Russia's premier assets in unconventional warfare and power projection, declared a mutiny. This all stemmed from the Battle of Bakhmut, with Wagner being the primary force that Russia sent in human wave attacks which caused severe losses to Wagner fighters and this led to a lot of tension between Prigozhin and the Russian military leadership. Throughout the assault for months Prigozhin would complain about the Russian stinginess with artillery ammunition and the stupidity of the attacks. This drama went on for months and then finally in June 2023 Yevgeny Prigozhin posted a video which certainly appears fake showing what was described as a Russian missile attack on a Wagner camp. And while it does appear to be fake, he used that to launch his mutiny, seizing the strategic logistical hub of Rostov on Don and sending another convoy north towards Moscow. And this was an absolutely shocking, audacious, and dumbfounding event that happened the following few days. The shocking thing about all of it was they were basically unresisted the entire way. They seized Rostov on Don within hours and they were able to go all the way up to the gates of Moscow uncontested. The Russian Air Force and military largely sat on the sidelines and just watched. However, Prigozhin planned on capturing the Russian military leadership in Rostov on Don, but whenever he took the city, they were not there. So having failed to capture the key members of the Russian military leadership, and with Wagner forces on the edge of Moscow, Prigozhin decided to stand down. Wagner and Prigozhin would ultimately be sent to Belarus to train the Belarusian military, and Wagner would ultimately become absorbed into the Russian military proper. However, elements of Wagner continue to operate in Africa. It would take months, however, ultimately Prigozhin would get his due and would be killed outside of Moscow. Wagner was one of Russia's key tools for power projection and unconventional warfare. They had duties in Syria, other parts of the Middle East, and throughout Africa. Losing Wagner takes a key tool away not just from its war in Ukraine, but takes a key tool away from other kinds of activities throughout the world. And yet this is not the most shocking thing that happened in 2023, as weird as it was. On October 7th, 2023, Hamas launched an attack on Israel, killing over 1,200 Israeli citizens. And this was one of the most shocking and brutal terrorist attacks that we've ever seen. This prompted a war in Gaza with Israel mobilizing over 300,000 reservists and beginning a brutal air campaign that has killed over 20,000 Palestinians as of the time of this recording. Overall, the Israeli objective would be to destroy Hamas once and for all. And through all of this, Iranian proxies have not stood idly by. Has has maintained a low-level conflict with Israel since the war began, with Israel threatening Hezbollah that if they don't push further back into Lebanon, then they will in fact open up a new front in the war with Hezbollah. Yemen Houthi rebels who signed a recent ceasefire with Saudi Arabia have reintroduced themselves into this conflict. This has led to the world's top five shipping companies to cease transit of the Red Sea, which could cause some significant supply chain problems in the near future if this is not resolved. And this has led the US to creating a coalition to fight the Houthis and deter them from continuing attacks in the Red Sea. US forces have also been attacked over a hundred times throughout the other parts of the Middle East, specifically in Iraq and Syria. 
And all of this with the war in Gaza still going on and Hamas not being defeated quite yet. Iran and Hezbollah have threatened the United States and Israel on what would happen if Hamas was destroyed, specifically saying that the war would expand into a regional conflict. But it's not clear if those are just threats or attempts to just deter any kind of decisive action. This has been an absolutely brutal war. Of course, tens of thousands have been killed, most of them being civilians. Overall, there have been plenty of important events in 2023 that will shape the world for 2024 and beyond. The wars in Ukraine and Gaza, tensions in Korea and between the US and China, and none of that even addresses the economy or climate change. It's a good thing that God is good. And while things are not great right now in the world, it'll all be fixed when Jesus comes back. Having said all of this, if you want to see how all of these events will impact 2024, check out this video. If it's not published yet, you're probably watching this in the first week of this video being published, so come back next week and this video will be out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on any of these stories that we've talked about and your thoughts on what 2024 will bring or any of your memories from 2023. Also leave a like to support this channel. It really helps this channel grow. Until next time.